Hi booktube, Lynette here again and I'm coming to you this time with my mid-April wrap-up. I thought that because my uh, wrap-up for March was so long, it was I think it was about 35 minutes in the end, that I would try and split Aprils because I'm doing really well now and uh, I'm on book eight uh, so far and it's only the 14th of April at the moment. So Potentially I could read quite a few more books this month so I thought I would try and break the wrap up down for you so it's not quite so long. So straight on with the books. The first book that I finished in April is Elevation by Stephen King. Now it's no surprise that I finished this one quite quickly. As you can see it's quite a short book. It was only 132 pages and I really really enjoyed it. I really loved being back in the mind of Stephen King. Uh, I think he's an excellent uh, writer. I've always enjoyed his work since I was in my early teens. Um, but this isn't a horror, this isn't a thriller, uh, it's just a little bit odd. It's about the friendship between four people. The main character is Scott and he has discovered that he is losing weight and he goes to an old friend of his who is a retired doctor uh, who's called Bob and together they try to work out why he's actually been losing weight because they can't find any medical reason for it. And it also turns out that uh, regardless of whether Scott is clothed or unclothed, whether he has something in his pockets or not, uh, his weight stays the same. So he does a small experiment while he's with the doctor where he has a roll of coins in his pocket and he takes the coins out of his pocket and he finds that actually his weight hasn't changed. This isn't a spoiler, it's all in the first few pages. Um, this is also about his relationship with his neighbours who are called Deirdre and Missy. He's been having an issue with them uh, because they keep allowing their dogs to foul his lawn. And he's asked them to stop. And it's all about how one act of kindness from Scott towards Deirdre changes their entire relationship. They go from having a very tense relationship to being very, very good friends. Uh, so it takes you through um, him losing weight and obviously the outcomes of that and also friendship and how the friendship has an impact. Uh, like I say, it's a very short book. There's not lots of detail. If I told you any more, I'd be giving the story away. But I really do recommend if you like Stephen King, but you're not into more of the horror stories, then definitely give this one a try. I highly recommend it. Like I say, only short. It's only 132 pages. And this was a solid four star book for me. And actually, after I finished this, I really, really wanted to go on a Stephen King kick. So the next book that I finished at the start of April was Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I've talked about this before. I've been rereading the series since the start of the year. And this was the final book in the series. I, again, absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. This book had me crying from the first page. I really, really enjoy these stories and I think they're fantastic and I think they're great for all ages, uh, you, whether you're 8 or 80. Um, I think you can find something in these books to enjoy. This is Harry's final year at Hogwarts and it's how he continues the task that Dumbledore set for him in book 6. And that this time he takes Ron and Hermione with him to help him uh, find all the items that he needs to find. It's also, again, it's quite heavy on the tale of friendship and how certain things can affect friendships. And it's about love and it's about hope and it's about trust. And it's just such a great story. I, again, I absolutely love it. And I, again, once I'd finished it, I wanted to go back to book one and start all over again. I never want to fall out of this world once I've been in it for a while. And yes, I probably will reread them all at some point during this year. But again, like I say, I gave it five stars. I can't really tell you too much about the story because it would give it away if you haven't read it already. But if you've if you've got if you like wizards and magic and the fantastical, then give these books a try. If you haven't, if uh, if you've read them before and you haven't reread them for a while, I highly recommend rereading them, especially at the moment if you're feeling a bit slumpy. Um, because they will be great books to get you out of it. So from there I moved to ebooks, and the next book that I finished is The Dragon's Pursuit by Jessie Donovan. 
this is set on her Lockguard Highland Dragons series um, in the Scottish Highlands and it's following the story of Chase and Layla. Chase has known for two years that Layla is his true mate. However, Layla doesn't know because the females don't tend to realise who their true mate is until the male identifies themselves to them. But Layla is a doctor. She is the only doctor on Lockguard lands and she is struggling uh, to fit everything in and so she sacrifices her personal life. Chase, as soon as he realised that uh, he was her true mate, started to try to court her but she was having none of it. So he's just insinuated himself into her life and he does little things for her and he's always there for her and this then this story is the culmination of the two years hard work that Chase has put in to prove that he is a stable reliable male that she can count on however things happen in this book which mean that Layla is uh, struggling and she needs Chase more than ever in fact she's having some thefts happen within her surgery and she employs Chase to install some cameras for her because he's the electrician on Lockguard and he helps her find out who the culprit is and why they've been doing it and this culminates in a lot of other family issues for Layla but all the time Chase is at her side proving that he is solid dependable and he will be there for her and it's a great love story they have a happy ever after you're a bit unsure towards the end whether they are going to have a happy ever after because of other things that happen although that was what knocked it down to four stars for me there was something that was thrown in right at the very last minute um that was just it was just another thing to keep them apart and i i, I couldn't make peace with that um so i have knocked it down to four stars for that reason so it wasn't it wasn't the best of her dragon stories that i've read but i did really enjoy it and it did leave me get wanting more and i have a couple of short stories by her which are based around children i can't remember whether on lockguard or stonefire uh, lands but there's a couple of short stories and then i've got two stories that she's written from the point of view of american dragon shifters which is somewhere she hasn't gone before so i was very tempted to pick up one of those but because i do have quite a big tbr for april i thought no i'll leave them they will quite happily come for me so then the next book that I moved on to was a disappointing read for me and really I should have DNF'd it but I didn't DNF it because I couldn't be bothered to find a book to replace it in Romanceopoly and this book was The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is the second book in her Princes series and I just I really struggled with this one Immediately you're launched into a situation in the book where you meet the main characters but it's a tense situation and it doesn't really give you any feel for who the characters are and you're a bit lost because you're trying to figure out what the characters are actually doing and why they're in the situation and how they got there and it just left me, yeah, I just, I just, I, I read it and I read it all the way through because by the time I got to about halfway through things were starting to pick up the writing had slightly improved, you knew a bit more about them um, and I did actually get through to the end because by that time I was invested in, in the actual subplot which is that someone has been uh, murdering sheep and one of the main characters, um, Harry, has been implicated and his employer, Lady Maitland, is trying to uh, clear his name, help him clear his name. So... I did I, I did get into it towards the end one of the few things that I did like about this book was Lady Maitland is um, single and she does get together with Harry who is her land steward so he's her employee and they have start to ha have a relationship and Lady Maitland has three brothers uh, who when they find out about what's happening between Lady Maitland and Harry they arrive at her estate and make it clear that they're not too happy However, instead of the usual, oh, you've been defiled, you must marry um, reaction, they just wanted to make sure that she was happy and that she knew what she was doing and that Harry wasn't actually after her for her money and that it was a genuine 
liking between the two of them which i thought was very refreshing because that's usually the case in these uh, books in regency and victorian era history romances is that the lead female once she's been caught in a compromising position with the lead male she has to marry him and then all the tension goes from there so it's quite refreshing actually to have that change uh, i have however decided to dnf this series i won't be moving on to the last book uh, purely based on this on this book i really enjoyed the first one i remember really enjoying it and i think i gave it a three star um but this book, no, unfortunately, it was knocked down to a two. And that does mean that I won't be continuing on. So the fifth book that I finished so far in April is Lancelot by Giles Christian. This is an Arthurian legend uh, retelling from the point of view of Lancelot. And I absolutely fell in love with this book. It wasn't one that I actually picked up and devoured straight through it was one that I read in pieces but I really really enjoyed it and I think um, that's because I took my time with it and I took my time to read it um, but yes it, it was just so good it starts out with Lancelot as a boy and it tells his story right the way through so it's not about Arthur it is all about Lancelot you do get some of the Arthurian legends in here and you do get the uh, love triangle between Lancelot, Guinevere and Arthur. I fell in love with Lancelot from the first page and I, I've i always thought he's quite a compelling character and I've always wanted to know more about him. So to see someone has actually gone into it and, and written all this potential backstory, I don't know how much of it is truth. Um, I don't know how much of it is you know because i've never actually looked that far into it it's just something i've always been intrigued by and i i really really enjoyed that and the meeting of uh, guinevere and giles was harsh but quite sweet and the friendship that grew between them the fact that they they were friends before they were anything else um, made this so much more believable of their their love it wasn't just i think a lot of um other stories that are out there portray it as lost at first sight whereas this doesn't this actually has two people getting to know each other and falling in love that way and the actual lust at first sight was between Arthur and Guinevere um, and love for them came later but I also like how Giles Christian when he was then looking at the Arthurian legends he hasn't written them as the legends we know uh, there is one specific legend that I can think of in here, which if you thought of it today, there is a magical, fantastical element to it. But in this, he writes it as a real life happening. Um, and he, you, he then goes on then through um, the next stage of the book to say how that then became twisted into the legend that we know it is now. And I really liked that as well. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, so I only gave this four stars. Uh, there was just something that stopped it from being five. At the end of it, I was left a little bit speechless. I didn't really know how to describe how I felt. Um, this will have gone up before, but I've actually been trying to vlog the Owls Readathon, uh, which for which this is one of the books I read. And I haven't actually been able to do an update since I finished it because I just didn't know what to say. Um, so I'm probably going to have to go on and, and film that update a bit later today because I've read another book since then for the for the owls. Uh, but yes, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. If you like the Arthurian legends, I haven't read many, but I would recommend reading Giles Christian. He's got another book due out, um, which I think is going to be called Camelot. And that is all about Galahad. Um, so... I'm quite tempted to pick that one up, although that one will be in hardback and this one will be in paperback. I am quite tempted to pick that one up. Um, I might just get it on my e-reader and read it and then maybe pick up the, the, the paperback because I'd really love to have the two together. Um, they're stunning covers as well. This this cover is just gorgeous. It's actually gold. I don't know if it shows up very well in the camera, um, but it's absolutely brilliant and I really loved it. And yes, I'm definitely going to read more by Giles Christian possibly Camelot next. I may go to his Viking series instead. Um, but yes, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. Highly recommend it. The next book that I read was another short book 
and this again was for the Owls Readathon. I'm sorry, I haven't really been saying what the books were for, but um, these books were all for Romance Hopley or uh, Owls Readathon. Um, but the next one, I went to a romance novel, proper romance novel, because Lancelot was a little heavy in places. Uh, so I did actually decide to read that one, um, read a romance novel after that one instead, uh, just to lighten it a little bit. And I actually devoured this one in just over an hour and a half um, in one evening, straight after I'd finished Lancelot, actually. And this book was The One You Want by Gina Showalter. This was a three star book for me. It's only 114 pages, but I just felt there was something a little bit lacking in it. I did enjoy it. Uh, I've read a little bit of Gina Shaw Walter's work before, uh, which I've enjoyed. Um, but they aren't standout wow books for me. She's an author that I can probably pick up and leave as and when I feel like it. But I did enjoy it and it was actually a nice palate cleanser after Lancelot. Uh, this book is about Henna and Dane. Henna lives in a small town in America and Dane lives in the nearby city but Dane is also originally from this small town and he has come back to the town because of a party which Kenna has also been invited to which it turns out it's their parents are getting married. Unfortunately Kenna has a bit of a reputation in the small town purely because it's a small town and she is trying to stop that reputation from getting any worse by being as well behaved as she can and Dane also harbours a little bit of ill feeling towards Kenna at first um, but then he comes to realise that actually he needs to apologise to her and he hears the rumours and decides that he needs to hear the truth from Kenna himself and then from there it's how they become involved and have a happy ever after uh, it's a stepbrother trope um, which is one that I'm not normally very fond of can't really say very much about it it was only 114 pages to say too much would give the story away but it is a sweet little love story and it was like I say a nice palate cleanser after reading The Heaviness of Lancelot and I would recommend it if you just want something quick and easy like I say I got through it in about an hour and a half and it was it was just it was just good it was just okay um, hence the three stars but not as bad as The Leopard Prince which left me with a bad taste in my mouth but yes that's uh that was the next book that I finished not very memorable unfortunately but yes not too bad the last book that I've read or finished so far in April is A Nordic King by Karina Howe this is a romance novel set around the Danish royal family this is about Aurora uh, who has traveled to Denmark to be to apply for uh, the job as nanny to the king of Denmark, Axel. And this gave me, I, I really enjoyed this book. This gave me really strong Sound of Music vibes, which is one of my all-time favourite musicals. And I absolutely really loved that um, right from the start. And then towards the end, you start getting the fairy tale feeling um, of kind of Cinderella-ish vibes. So from start to finish, this was a really enjoyable book for me. Uh, I thought Aurora was absolutely brilliant. She wasn't afraid to stand up to Axel and, and tell him exactly where he was going wrong. And Axel wasn't afraid to take the criticism. Uh, he actually took it really, really well. And I thought, I just thought how it was brilliant how Axel's been quite closed off. Um, they both know that maybe a relationship between the two of them is not appropriate, but they work through it. And there are obstacles that are thrown up in their way, uh, which to start with, initially, um, the the obstacle from Aurora's point of view, I thought that that would have a worse impact than it did. And initially, Axel's reaction was, I, I did think was going to go in a way that um, wouldn't I wouldn't have been happy with if he'd carried on that way. But actually, it, it turned around and it changed. And I was really impressed with that. Um, again, it wasn't the typical reaction. Um, there were there were issues and they worked through them and they worked through them together. They One of them didn't go off in their own head and go, oh, you know, this is, this is a problem. They talked to each other. 
and I thought that was so great and so refreshing you don't see that often again um and I was just really impressed by that really enjoyed it and I really liked Karina Howell's writing style so I'm pretty sure I will pick something else up by her in the near future um maybe the end of the month I'm not too sure but I'm really really excited to move on with more of her work and she's definitely going to be an author that I look out for in future so that's the first seven books that I finished in April I have four books left now on my TBR for the month three of those are still for the Owls Magical Readathon one of those is for the In Death Read Along I have completed the Romanceopoly uh, squares that I'd set for myself um, for this month so if I finish um, the three books one of them is the four books rather um, one of them is one of them's going to be a little harder going it's going to be take me a little longer to get through again a bit like Lancelot it's probably going to be one that I pick up in dribs and drabs the other three are all romance novels which I know I'm going to fly through so I'm thinking that possibly uh, by the end of this week, possibly I'm going to end up with hardly anything left to read for the month of April. So I haven't yet decided how I'm going to manage that, whether I'm going to carry on with books I've already started because I've got um, I've definitely got The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan, which is up there somewhere. Uh, Why Mummy Drinks, which is up there somewhere. And then I've got a couple of other books that I've started and maybe I should make a bit more of a of a um dent into before i go on to anything else so i'm really not sure where i'm going to go from there or if i'll just do some more rolls on my romance opoly board and see if i can get ahead a little bit um so yes so that's the first half of april uh, i hope you've all managed to find your reading bug again and i will look forward to speaking to you in the next week or two with the wrap up for the rest of what i've read in april see you all soon bye